Satan, the prince and kings of Tyrus. Now, Satan's fall came about because of pride. He wanted and still wished to be like God. One thought that is imperative to understand is that Satan is not stupid. He is not stupid. He is considered wiser than Daniel, and he knows many deep hidden secrets, you know, like dark sentences. First we read, he is called the Prince of Tyrus, but beginning with the verse 11, Ezekiel changes Satan's title from prince to king and describes how beautiful he was in the beginning and how close he was to God himself. You know, like side by side, not like him. He was the covering cherub. Also noted in the confirmation in these scriptures that Satan was in the Garden of Eden. We discover that Satan's destruction is pronounced. God will destroy him with fire from within. Also, the Garden of Eden is when you're when you're living these days now and you have everything like all the goods that the garden of eden had that's where you're dwelling so today i just wrote it you know like a dear john letter to king prince tyrus and it's rare that this happens but I have a special guest on my on my channel, and my guest today is Stephen James Deshaun. Okay, so this is who I've been talking about for so long. Steve, I truly do appreciate you commenting on my channel, because it's rare. It's rare that you comment. And it's like, you know, sometimes these certain topics kind of get your attention even more to the point where you even have to like rise up and say something about it uh but you know i did say i did thank you for for commenting my lord okay and just stupid is what stupid does and it's stupid to play god but anyway thanks for commenting and it, it's your pleasure And yeah, the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. This is very true. It's a very true um, comment, for sure. It just depends on who's, who's the wicked one pouring out evil things, and who has the heart of the righteous. Who actually studieth to answer. So I thought it was funny how when you know who someone truly, like the bottom line is, the playing Jesus role, that's just a front to as many people who would believe. And then the gematria role along with, uh, you know, it's still the gematria and the Jesus role together. Like it comes with the package with Steve. It's the believing package of Gematria and Jesus Christ in the flesh and Adam and everything. But I know as well as all of his colleagues at that or when they're gonna when they see him um, as a man, they're gonna be astonished at him when they when they behold him. So there is a person on earth that is uh, supposed to be walking around saying that they're Satan in the flesh. And I know a lot of people believe that, too. A lot of people believe that they're actually Satan in the flesh. And But see, Steve is incognito with this one. To his colleagues, yeah, he's still portraying that he's Satan in the flesh. Still. And he's still going to try to convince him as much as possible, no matter how much I disprove everything about Steve, which is just he's a normal person, but he's taking on that everything that's written about with Tyrus, he is taking on that lead, that lead role. 
And I just want to give Steve more credit for who he's, who he believes he is. I just do. Steve's not giving himself enough credit because he's just not, he's not telling you the whole truth. So if he tells you the truth, then, you know, you can see who he's playing out. And it's many, it's, it's everything and everyone. When you're playing out Jesus Christ and you're playing out Satan at the same time, and you're playing out the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet, you're playing out everything. And you know it. So thanks for commenting on my channel, Steve. I appreciate you coming to my channel with your original account and not some other trollish account that you got to still say things, but uh, you're just not being yourself. So while we're on the topic... Um, Tyrus, uh, Nick, uh, Nicholas, you know, 111. You're going to be, uh, what did Trump say? You're going to be a, a, you're a great, you're a, a, a great guy. Talking about the one-year-old baby that's in his first year of reign, 111. Anyway, it came to pass in the 11th year in the first day of the month. That the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken. That was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me. I shall be replenished. Now she is weighed laced. Wa laid waste. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you. O Tyrus, and will cause many nations to come up against you, as the sea causes his waves to come up, and they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus. So there's walls. These walls are compassing the camp of the saints. Same thing as the walls. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers. You know those those towers that you got up up there. Your um, did I not say that God is going to strip away your power? And you have these five G towers. That is your power. So they are your towers. I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. It shall be. A place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. For I have spoken it, says the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations. And her daughters, which are in the field, shall be slain by the word. Not for the word, slain by the word. Slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord for thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings, from the north, with horses, with chariots, with horsemen, with companies, with much people. He shall slay with the sword your, your daughters in the field, and he shall make a fort against you, and cast up a mount against you, and lift up the buckler against you. And he shall set engines of war against your walls. And with his axes he shall break down their, break down your towers. This is when, this is when that second woe passes and uh, the seventh angel begins to sound the mystery of God should be finished because. These towers, when once these towers go down, these uh, the sky opens up and the sun shines his face upon the land of the desolate. By reason of the abundance of his horses, their dust shall cover you. Your walls shall shake at the noise of the horsemen, just at the noise of the horsemen, and of the wheels and of the chariots, when he shall enter into your gates as men enter into a city wherein is made a, a breach. 
So your walls will shake at the noise of the horseman, just by the noise of the horseman. With the hoofs of his horses shall he tread down all your streets. He shall slay your people by the sword and your strong garsons shall go down to the ground. I don't know what gars garsons is. is. <clears throat> and they shall make a spoil of your riches. And make a prey of your merchandise. And they shall break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. And they shall lay your stones and your timber and your dust in the midst of the water. So with the hoofs of his horse, horses shall he tread down all your streets and slay your people by the word of God. I will cause the noise of your songs to cease. You know, uh, a hey Robin, I got a special song just to sing for you. It's a surprise. Well, I will cause the noise of your songs to cease. Good night. I got a, I'm going to make a video, another uh, karaoke video, just for Robin. Just for Robin. Okay? Just for Robin. Another karaoke video. It's a special song just for Robin Henry Tease. I'm going to dedicate it to Robin Henry Tease. I've been practicing it for the past couple days, so <laughs> we'll see how good I can sound <laughs> in that one. I never heard it. It'll be a surprise. And I've altered the words just a little bit. And I've altered the words just a little bit. I've altered the words just a little bit. Later on, because he's been working on changing the lyric just a little, just altering the words just a tad bit. Uh, he sounds very excited. You're very excited, Steve, to make this this song about me, Robin. Okay. Let's just. Uh, Let's just name that tune, shall we? Out of all the songs in the world, what would the predictable Stephen James Deshaun possibly sing to me? Give you 10 seconds to think about it. All right, rock and Robin. <laughs> tweet, 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 rock and Robin. <laughs> All the little birds had joined Gay Bird Street. I will cause the noise of the songs to cease, and the sound of your harps shall be no more heard. And I will make you like the top of a rock. You shall be a place to spread nets upon, you shall be built no more. For I, the Lord, have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to Tyrus, Shall not the isles shake at the sound of your fall? You know, Humpty and Dumpty. When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of you, Shall not the isles shake at the sound of your fall? And when the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of you, then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones and lay away their robes and put off their broidered garments. They shall close themselves with trembling when God knocks down your towers, they shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and be astonished 
at you. And they shall take up a lamentation for you and say to you, How art thou destroyed that was inhabited of seafaring men, the renowned city which was strong in the sea, her, she and her inhabitants, which caused their terror, to be on all that hunt it, that haunt it. Now all the isles tremble in the day of your fall, yet the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at your departure. Not us, them, the ones that believed you. For thus says the Lord God, when I shall make you a desolate city, so this is God talking about making the city desolate. Just like in Daniel 27, 9, 27. And after three score or two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end therefore shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. I guess everybody just assumes that, that this is talking about Satan. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice oblation to cease for the overspreading of the abominations, and he shall, call, shall make it desolate. He shall make it desolate, even unto the marriage, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This is God making it desolate. Knocking down your towers and your wall. Now shall the isles tremble in the day of your fall. The isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at your departure. For thus says the Lord God, When I shall make you a desolate city, like the cities that are not inhabited. When I shall bring up the deep upon thee, you know, the floods, the deep, the great deep upon you, and, well, great waters shall cover you. But this is waters of the gospel. The truth is going to drown you with truth. When I shall bring you down... When I shall bring you down with them that descend into the pit with the people of old time and shall set you in the low parts of the earth in places desolate of old with them that go down to the pit that you be not inhabited and I shall set glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror, and you shall be no more. Though you be sought for, yet shall you never be found again, says the Lord. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O oh, you that are situate at the entry of the sea, which are a merchant of the people for many isles, many land, thus says the Lord God, Tyrus, you have said, I am of perfect beauty. 
Now let's not get too carried away, right? The borders are in the midst of the seas. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They have made all your ships, all your ship boards of fir tree and senire. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make mast for you. Of the oaks of Bashan have they made your oars. The company of the Asherites have made you benches of ivory brought out of the isles of Chittim. Okay, so that's mentioned uh, somewhere else, I forget, but it sounds very familiar. The ships of Chitt Chittim. Fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which you spreaded forth to be your sail. Blue and purple from the isles of Elisha, Elisha was that which covered you. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad. Just bear with me, people. I'm reading it for the first time. I don't. I'm just catching on where he's, where it's talking about. Uh, you know the, you know Satan. Zidon and Arvad, where your mariners, your wise men, O Tyrus, all your wise men that were in you were your pilots. And ancients of Gebel and the wise men thereof were, were in this in thee thy caulkers. And all the ships of the sea were their mariners were in you to occupy your merchandise. They of Persia and of Lud and of Put were in your army, your men of war, they hanged the shield and helmet in you. They set forth your comeliness. So the ships of Tarshish did sing of you in your market, and you were replenished and made very glorious in the land of the seas. Your rowers have brought you into great waters. You know, the ones that are rowing you, they, they're bringing you into the great waters. The east wind has broken you in the midst of the seas. You know, a great he's going to cause a great wind to pass over. The riches, your riches and your fares, your merchandise, your mariners, your pilots, your, your caulkers, you know, I don't know, your painters... And the occupiers of the merchandise and all the men of war, all of the men of war that are in you and in all your company which is in the midst of you shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of your ruin. The suburbs shall shake. So, yeah, okay, here we go. Just expect, like, bombs set in certain places to go off so we can hear, feel the ground shake. Uh, the suburbs shall shake, because they're taking us literally, at the sound of the cry of your pilots. Even though this is, this is the real scriptures, but, you know, the elite go by the same thing. So they try to make things uh, literally. And, um, you know, like eating flesh, you know, and all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. They shall stand upon the land and shall cause their voice to be heard against you and shall cry bitterly. So all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. This is when none will come to your help. They shall stand upon the land and shall cause their voice to be heard against you and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall wallow themselves in ashes and 
they shall make themselves utterly bald for you and gird them with sackcloth. Sounds like they're humbling themselves, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And they shall weep for you with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. And in their wailing they shall take up a lamentation for you and lam it over you, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When your wares went forth out of the seas, you filled many people. You did enrich the kings of the earth with the multitudes of the riches and of thy merchandise. Not not money, just, you know, riches, the power, merchandise, everything. In the time when you shall be broken by the seas in the depths of, of the waters, your merchandise and all your company in the midst of you shall fall, you know, and not be found when you turn your face against the fort of your own land. All the inhabitants... Of the isles, the lands, the place, the, where we're at, shall be astonished at you. And their kings shall be sore afraid. They shall be troubled. They shall be troubled in their continents. So, when it comes to Daniel and his three buddies there, he begged of you to look at the continents of our faces for 10 days the merchants among and that's because these people the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at you and their kings shall be sore afraid they shall be troubled in their continents their faces are going to be uh, very uh, very troubled so the merchants among the people shall hiss at you you shall be a terror and never shall be any more. So, son of man, say unto Prince Tyrus, thus says the Lord God, because, because your heart is lifted up and you have said, I am God, I sit in the sea of God, in the midst of the seas, yet you're a man. You know what I mean? You're just a man. You're not God. Thou, though you set your heart as the heart of God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from you. So why is he comparing Satan to Daniel? Unless he's comparing someone that's acting as a man. Because Daniel is a man. With your wisdom and with your understanding... You have gotten your riches, you have gotten gold and silver into your treasures by your great wisdom and by your traffic. You has thou increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, it says the Lord God, because you have set your heart again, set your heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon you, and terrible the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, and they shall defile your brightness. This is us right now speaking up against you, Tyrus. They shall bring you down to the pit, and you shall die the deaths of them that are slain. Okay. Notice deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. I've always said that this death is to die in Christ. And to be slain is by the word of God. It's not a literal thing, Steve. Okay. Will you, will you yet say before him, you know, like Daniel, that slays you? I am God, but you shall be a man and no God in the hand of him that slays you. 
You shall die in the depths of the uncircumcised by the hand of the strangers, for I have spoken it, says the Lord God. When you sing that song, okay, you're going to feel so stupid because I already nailed what song you're going to sing. That's a damn shame, ain't it? <laughs> all that practice and altering the words. As you're singing Rock and Robin, Tweet, Tweetly Elite, how dumb are you going to feel? How dumb do you feel right now that you already know what song that I know that you're going to pick out of a million gazillion songs in a world? So if you don't produce a video tonight with the song that you're going to sing, well, then that means it was Rock and Robin and you feel foolish because I guessed it like that because you're so damn predictable. Wake up and see who you really are. You're a prince of the Most High. You are one of God's princes. You are Israel. He will rule as God, it's bigger than that, though. Israel, he will rule as God, but it's from the root to prevail, have power, power as a prince. See, we are God's princes. They didn't want you to know that. Now let's destroy Satan's kingdom since I found the nerve. Now I'm going to go for the throat. Ready? This is just like being in a ring. Once you found the enemy's weakness, you exploit it and you destroy it. The word of the Lord, the self-existent Jehovah, came again unto me. By the way, we're in Ezekiel 28. 28. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith, look. Everybody look right there. The Lord God. Tell me what you see. The word Lord is not all capital. It's Hebrew word 136. But look at the word God, capital G, capital O, capital D. So the word Lord means the Lord as a proper name of God only, like my Lord, Adonai. See, Adonai? See right there, Adonai? Okay, so thus saith the Lord, Adonai, Jeho Jehovah, which is Jehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. So here we are talking to the prince of Tyrus, and the prince of Tyrus is the devil in the flesh. Now watch. The prince of Tyrus is the devil in the flesh. Now watch. The, thus said, son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a what? Oh, you said you're an L. Oh, he's trying to be L, see? So the Prince of Taurus said, I am L, oh, the Almighty, see?